Good morning, students. Today I'm going to teach you Q switching. Okay, so basically, Q switching is a technique for increasing the power power of the laser greater than 10 to the power 9 watts. Okay, so it is very high. So in order to achieve very high laser, very high power laser, Q switching technique is used. Okay, so uh, first we should know what is Q. Okay, Q factor, it is the ratio, it is defined as the ratio of power stored in the dominant mode. Okay, as we know, there are many modes operating in a single laser uh, operation. So here we, we take the dominant mode uh, and we take the power stored in the dominant mode into the total number of modes divided by power dissipated per second. Okay, so it is the ratio of power stored with the power dissipated. Okay, so if the dominant mode power is very high, then we'll have a very high Q switching rate. Okay, so if the, if the Q rate, Q switching, Q factor is very high, then automatically the power of the uh, laser will be very, very high and it is greater than 10 power 9 watts. Okay, so Q switching, it works on the principle of achieving greater population inversion. So we know what is population inversion. What is population inversion? The population of the higher energy level will be very higher than the lower energy level. So this is population inversion. We know that population inversion, it is the must for laser operation. Yes, so here for very high power, the population inversion should be very, very greater than the normal population inversion. Okay, so this is the very basic condition. Okay, so here the energy achieved in this Q switching technique is, so the energy it is denoted by E that is equal to half H nu, it is nu, okay, into N Q minus N T into V. Okay, so this is the formula for uh, calculating the energy. Okay, so remember the energy will be very high. Okay, so H nu will be the energy of the photon. Okay, the light energy that we are using for pumping. Okay, so this is the energy of the photon H nu and N Q is the uh, number of, uh, so the population inversion achieved during Q switching. So the Q switching, because of Q switching, we achieve one population inversion. So that is NQ. NT is the normal population inversion. So the, the other name of NT is threshold population inversion. Threshold population inversion. Okay. And V is the volume of the material. Okay. So this is the calculation of energy. So as I as already told, if the population inversion for Q switching mode is very high, then obviously our energy will be high. If the energy is high, the power is also very, very high. Okay. Now let's uh, study it in detail. So for Q switching, this is the basic block diagram. Here we have M1 mirror and M2 mirror. M1 mirror is completely sealed. That is fully reflecting, M2 is partially reflecting and then in between we have a gain medium or active medium. Okay, next in, in addition to these we will have two extra components, one is polarizer and another one is focal cells and it is uh, powered by a voltage source V. Okay, now let's see the working of this Q switching technique. Okay, how it works. Okay, so basically the radiation will come out of the gain medium. Okay, and then it will be uh, traveling to the polarizer. The purpose of polarizer is to linearly polarize the radiation. So all the radiation will now be linearly polarized. After polarization, uh, it will move to this block. Okay, here the voltage supply source is initially zero. Okay, that means there is no supply to this focal cells. So at this moment, nothing will happen. The linearly polarized wave um, radiation will hit the mirror too. And because of the total reflection, everything will be coming back. And again, the process repeats. Okay, but 
when the voltage supply is given to this focal cells, what will happen? Okay, so here the radiation will be coming out because of this polarizer, it will convert it into linearly polarized. All the radiation will be converted into linearly polarized wave. Okay, and then this focal cells, it will shift the linearly polarized wave to pi by 2. That means 90 degree phase shift it will give and one more thing it will do, it will convert the linearly polarized wave into circularly polarized. So two things it will do, one is linearly polarized wave will be converted into circular polarized wave and next is it will change the pi by 2. Okay, it will change the phase to pi by 2. Okay, so the phase will be shifted. Okay. So after this, it will again hit the mirror and it will it will try to come back. Okay. Now remember it is circularly polarized wave. Okay. So at this moment, again it will convert circularly polarized wave into linearly polarized wave, but at this time there is no phase shift. Okay, so already one phase shift happened. So when it is linearly polarized at this point, what happens? We have a same linearly polarized wave, but the direction will be opposite. Because of this phase shift, there will be the there will be uh, the direction will be changed. Okay, now what happens? This polarizer does not allow the radiation to come back to the gain medium. Why? The linearly polarized wave is not same as the previous. Okay, so because of that, the cavity is cut off. There is there won't be any laser oscillation or any laser emission happening. So at this point, we'll have lot of energy. So all the energy will be comes out of the laser cavity. So that is the basic concept. Okay, remember nothing will be come back because of the voltage source. Everything will be going outside. Okay, so for the because of that only we can gain, we can achieve up to greater than nine watts of power. Okay, so next topic is mode locking. Okay, so this is the second technique uh, for achieving very high power laser. Okay, so here all here it is this also can produce uh, power of greater than 10 power 9 watts. Okay, so uh, mode locking means basically a laser cavity uh, can accommodate more number of modes as we have studied in the previous classes, more number of modes it, it can be accommodated. Okay, so because of more number of modes, um, uh, more uh, diff uh, sorry, different uh, frequency uh, components will be traveling into the laser medium. Okay, so different frequency means each of the waveforms will follow a different way uh, phases okay so if you compare each phases their phase relationship will be out of phase okay each of each and every uh, waveforms will be in out of phase okay so uh, when we calculate the total power that means the total irradiance Okay, irradiance of each and every uh, laser modes, okay, into the single cavity, what will happen? Everything will be summed up and you will get a very small irradiance. So that is the drawback of using large number of modes, okay. But using mode locking, what we are going to do is, so we will introduce an electro-optic shutter. Okay, electro-optic shutter into this laser cavity. So what it will do is every every 2L by C seconds. Okay, so every 2L by C, at C seconds, the shutter will be opened. Okay, so what and all waveforms having same phase will be allowed to travel into the shutter. Okay, so after 2L by C seconds, the shutter will be closed and after that nothing can come out of it, out of the shutter. Okay, so by using this uh, technique, we can easily synchronize and uh, synchronize the uh, all the modes. 
okay so by using this at a particular time the shutter will be open and at that time the 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 waveforms that is having uh, same face so see this example so here we have uh, the face of uh, first waveform second one and third waveform everything will be same so that will be allowed okay allowed through the shutter okay and every uh, so similar manner every 2 L by C seconds, the shutter will be closed and every uh, this much second, it will be synchronized. Okay, so at last what we will get is when we sum up all these waveforms, we will get an irradiance which is very very high. Okay, so the irradiance means the power. So the power is very very high because of this mode locking. So without mode locking, you see the power, it is very small and it is fluctuating but here oh yeah, every 2 L by C seconds the power it is very high the peak will be very very high compared to the average one okay that's it now let's see the next topic which is cavity damping so for cavity damping technique the laser cavity should produce high Q okay the Q value should be very very high and next here the cavity damping technique uses electro-optic electro or acoustic electro or acoustic devices okay so this device will periodically switches the laser cavity to emit or to emit the laser beams okay so this device periodically emits the laser beam out of the laser cavity okay so these are the two requirements for the cavity damping so here also the peak uh, uh, power will be very very high uh, compared to the average power so here by using this High frequency laser, so in the range of megahertz, frequency la laser beam can be emitted. Okay.